All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my first assembly language tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm just going to be talking about some general stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be writing any code in this one. But yes, I am going to tell you stuff which you need to know before you start writing some real assembly language code. So let's get started. Uh, uh, there's this one question uh, a lot of people have asked me. Uh, I think I should answer it right now. It's uh, why use assembly after all. So uh, yeah, you don't need to know assembly, I would say. Uh, even if you don't know assembly, you're not doing, you know, putting yourself at great loss or something. Uh, you can still develop most of the applications using high level programming languages like C and Java. But why uh, programmers around the world have a working knowledge of assembly is because there are uh, sections of code which sometimes need to interact with the hardware directly. And whenever such a section is encountered, they prefer using assembly for it rather than using C or Java. Now, why do they do that? Because assembly sort of offers a maximum control over the hardware. So what sort of programs am I talking about? I am talking about stuff like viruses. Uh, that it's viruses, yeah. So I'm talking about stuff like viruses. Uh, they are developed using assembly because uh, they need to manipulate how the hardware components really function. Then also you have uh, bootloaders. Now bootloaders are programs which are uh, started or which are executed I mean, this is the first program to be executed when you start up your computer it has instructions uh, involving transfer of the OS to the RAM and, and stuff like that so um, it's the first program basically to be executed and checks the presence of all the hardware components if you know that so again it has to interact with the hardware it has to be written in assembly also you have stuff like drivers Again, driver softwares um, need to define how a hardware component is going to function in a computer. So uh, people prefer writing driver softwares in assembly. Now, having said that, again, I don't think any one of us is going to be writing such uh, codes. So we probably just need assembly to get through the practicals. Yeah, but yeah, that's all we need the assembly for. All right, <laughs> moving ahead. In this semester, we're going to be dealing with uh, x86 or uh, 8086 assembly. Now, this assembly, which uh, is specific to the 8086 microprocessor, is a 16-bit assembly. Now, when I say a 16-bit assembly, what I really mean uh, in the most easiest way possible is that the 8086 microprocessor is not capable of processing more than 16 bits in one clock cycle. This is very important to remember. All the general purpose registers that we would be using uh, in 8086 are 16 bits in size and the, the microprocessor itself cannot process more than 16 bits at a time. So one clock cycle is equal to 16 bits <laughs> well that's the 8086 assembly we're going to be dealing with um uh, i want to jump to uh some of the basics as in um the problems that i faced while writing assembly codes myself uh, this is actually something uh, very common a lot of people have asked me how do i start i mean um I'm running a 32-bit processor, a 64-bit Windows XP, a 7, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how to start. So, yeah, even I had that problem when I started with um, assembly. So, I just want to clear that out before I move ahead. So, if you are using uh, any distribution of Windows 7 32-bit, even I'm using Windows 7 32 bit right now. So if you are using any uh, distribution of Windows 7 32 bit, uh, for the first couple of uh, DOS based applications which we would be writing in debug, uh, you don't need to download any software. 
and people say you need to download DOSBox and I'll tell you why why do you need DOSBox you need DOSBox if you were to develop an application or uh, a com file that actually means a command line executable so <coughs> if you were to uh, make a com file or an independent executable file which would uh, you know execute on your windows 7 system then you need DOSBox because windows 7 does not support 16-bit applications but we would be checking the output to our asm files directly we would not be designing applications for it so when i say that uh, everything is going to happen in debug so you don't need to download anything so uh, again even if you're on any other uh, operating system as such you are not going to need to download toss box for what we are going to be doing uh, but if you're on uh, windows 7 or uh, oh, i'm so sorry windows xp 32 bit so if you if you are on windows uh, xp 32 bit uh, then you would be able to make com files and execute them uh, without uh, having to download DOS box so windows 7 32 bit people can use design asm files run them inside debug console windows xp 32 bit people can uh, design com files and make uh, executables which uh, you know they can execute on any system whatsoever so having said that people using 64-bit systems i uh, would ask them to download dosbox and do all of their coding inside it because uh, i have seen um, some errors while uh, working on a 64-bit microprocessor so uh, i'm not going to be discussing dosbox in this one uh, if you all need it uh, just let me know i'll down i'll make another tutorial for dosbox now moving on uh, so you just need your Windows 7 system working for our tutorials. Uh, for the first couple of uh, programs, you'd be using Debug, uh, and after that, we'd be using uh, TASM. Uh, I'll, I'll talk more on that later. Uh, before that, uh, let me just talk about how uh, a basic assembly program is structured. So. We all know uh, while working with assembly, the most important component uh, is a register. So what sort of registers are there in the 8086 assembly we're going to be talking about? Well, we have eight uh, general purpose registers here. So what registers are, are there? Uh, we have AX, BX, CX, DX, I'm quite sure all of you know this. Uh, we also have SI, DI, uh, BP, and SP, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, SP. So this is the accumulator register AX, BX would be your base register. CX is your counting register. I'll talk more on that later, as in you need CX for your loops uh, in your program. DX is your general data register. Um, SI, source index pointer di destination index pointer you're gonna need those two while writing the move sp command uh bp is the base pointer register and sp is the stack pointer register uh these are the eight general purpose registers as i mentioned before all general purpose registers in 8086 assembly are 16 bit in size so they're all 16 bit in size uh we also have some segment registers Okay, I'm not going to be uh, going into great detail about these registers. You just need to know what segment registers are. We have CS, DS, ES, and uh, SS. So CS is a current segment or the segment which is pointing to the current program, whichever you're working on. DS is your uh, data segment register. We would define a segment for all our data that we use in our program. And DS would be the pointer to that segment and es is the extra segment which we define as per our usage uh, ss is the stack segment register it's pointing to the stack uh, in the program so these are segment registers and uh, what else do we have yeah we have something else i'm kind of forgetting this uh, yeah we have flag registers 
now flag registers uh, like AF or um, I don't know <coughs> uh, PF the parity flag register and so on now flag registers again we're not going to be dealing with flag registers directly but flag registers are used in order to uh, store the results of comparison of two values uh, whenever we use the compare command in endorse then uh, the results of the compare uh, instruction are stored in the flags so we would test the results using the flag registers also the flag registers are, are used when whenever there's an overflow uh, for example if you're adding two four bit numbers and the result goes to five bits and the overflow bit is usually stored in a flag register which is the accumulator flag so <laughs> these are the registers in uh, 8086 assembly uh, almost all of our programs are going to involve these registers oh, we'll talk more on that later but uh, <laughs> this is uh, for our data in the program for example when we write code in java we have certain variables where we store data but these you can imagine as data storage spots like uh, in memory which is uh, in memory these are the spots where would be, we would be storing our data or uh, uh, even the temporary data that is generated in the program next uh, very important how exactly do I uh, do something in DOS as in what sort of functions are there built in into uh, DOS now in DOS all the functions for example, uh, a function to print something on the screen or a function to accept some user input or whatever the function may be. There are obviously predefined functions in DOS, but in, in DOS, we don't have names for that function. So we have function codes. Uh, for example, 0, 01, 0, 02, then uh, 4CH, 3FH, you know. So these sorts of codes all of these codes represent a particular function in DOS so it's very important that uh, you know uh, whenever I'm referring to these codes as function codes so when I say uh, move uh, eh 01 h I am not exactly I'm not at all moving the value 01 h into AL I'm moving the function uh, 01 h into AL so, so the value here has no significance of its own it, it represents a function so it's very important to know whenever we be writing programs uh, uh, we all should know that this refers to a particular function in DOS and I would obviously explain uh, whatever a particular function does uh, <coughs> uh, we've discussed registers we've discussed functions we've discussed what exactly do you need now to run this uh, I'd be posting a link from where you can download TASM um, but we wouldn't be, we won't be needing that for the first couple of tutorials we'll be doing them in DOS um, and what exactly is TASM I'd like to clear up here uh, whenever we write a particular code um, an assembly language code obviously we're using mnemonics like move or uh, I don't know MVI or uh, what else do we have jump we have compare we have move sp all of these mnemonics need to be decoded converted into actual machine language or machine code now to do that we need an assembler now what debug does is it offers an assembler which uh, is is native to the operating system we're running so it, it's sort of a built-in assembler that we have uh, debug in order to uh, convert our codes to machine codes but uh, when we're not using debug obviously if you're writing a code in a text file we need something to assemble it to convert it to object code or machine code for that matter so for that we need something which is called an assembler and TASM is just that it's just an assembler it's just something which we would need in order to convert our code into machine code that's it that's all TASM does and to be very honest TASM has been discontinued it's very it's very very uh, pathetic little piece of software people do use uh, a FASM or MASM you can try out these IDEs um, it, it's just like TASM is uh, um, if I were to draw a sort of a analogy here TASM would be executing your Java programs in command line 
whereas uh, FASM or MASM would be executing your Java programs in Eclipse. So that's the difference. So that's why DASM really is, is it sucks, but we gotta use it. So I'll try and make it as easy for you as, as I can. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all for the introduction. Uh, this is just a test video, so I do need your suggestions to make this better for each and every one of you. Uh, please do suggest. Uh, I'm gonna take your leave now. Ta-da!